I've always uh, meant to ask you about the discovery of your group because you know I know you primarily as a group theorist and I think it's an interesting story. It was in Moscow that I first uh, learned things at the International Congress in 1966. I met my strange friend John Mackay, who you know, uh, perhaps I should call him our strange friend, hope he won't mind being called a strange friend. I was leaning against a pillow eating some uh, bread and salami or something, you know, some uh, thing that they sold just in the basement of Moscow University during the Congress. And uh, this man approached me and said, are you Conway? And I said, yes, you know. So he wasn't your friend at the time? No, he wasn't. He told me about this wonderful uh, sphere packing discovered by John Leach, uh, which is tr packing of 24 dimensional spheres. And he thought it had an interesting group. I'm not quite sure whether it was just Leach who thought or whether Mackay uh, thought on his own account. So I looked at it when I got back uh, home to Cambridge and I thought, yes, this must be, it seemed to be very, very symmetrical. You know, group theory is the study of symmetry. And um, it looked very symmetrical to me, this wonderful sphere packing. And um, so I approached John Thompson, who was the best group theorist in the world, and I think still is, and told him about it, and uh, sort of suggested he, you know, that he should look at this. And um, then, after a few weeks, you know, he, ne he never seemed to have looked at it. And I eventually said, John, you're not going to look at this, are you, you know? And he admitted as much, and apparently, at that time, uh, these interesting simple groups were all the rage in mathematics. But there were very few of them. Yeah, there time. were very few of them. What had happened was Mathieu discovered some in 1861, and then a century went by until 1963, I think it was, when Yanko discovered another one. And that sort of set the group theoretical world thinking about these things. Thompson sort of said, if you find the order of this group, that's to say the exact number of symmetries it contains, then I'll be interested. Until then, I'm not. And I told my wife that if th this thing works, which of course I didn't know, it's going to be rather big and it will make my mathematical name. And uh, so she was very understanding. But I was doing an enormous amount of teaching at the time uh, because I didn't have a proper job. <laughs> and um, we worked out that I could afford to spend six hours on Wednesdays from 6 p.m. till midnight and 12 hours on Saturdays from noon till midnight. And anyway, it came to the first Saturday. I wish I could remember the exact date, maybe. But it was some years after Moscow, I think. Yeah, it was. It 68. was 1969, I think. Maybe 68. Uh, anyway, I sort of uh, kissed the girls goodbye um, and went into our front room. And they were told not to interrupt Daddy. They didn't understand why whatever. Daddy did, just seemed to be scribbling on paper, but they didn't sort of think it was important or anything. Uh, but anyway, they promised not to go and interrupt Daddy. And then Daddy went in and, you know, we had just moved into the house we owned and the previous owner had left a lot of equipment behind. He made his living by moving into houses, which were sort of derelict to some extent, and doing them up and selling them for much more than he uh, moved into them. So he, he sort of typically lived in a house for about a year, I suppose. Anyway, he'd left huge rolls of wallpaper backing paper, great rolls of white paper. So I put one of them across a table and I started writing. And as I... Uh, continued to discover a little bit more about this. You know, I just pulled it down and so on. And I wrote about six or seven feet in the end. Um, 
And then at about six o'clock, I worked out this magic number that John Thompson had said would make him interested, you know. Uh, and um, I telephoned him and said uh, the number, well, I didn't actually know it exactly. I knew it was either a certain number or twice that number. So I told him what I knew. Um, and then he was as good as his word. In about 20 minutes, he telephoned back, and he was very, very excited. He said, um, you know, any group of this size with these properties, you know, he knew something about it. Uh, it oh, by the way, he said the order is one particular one of these two numbers, uh, and it involves the McLaughlin group and the Suzuki group and various... and the. Higman Sims Group, various other things that had just been discovered, essentially. And the Hall Yanko Group. I don't know whether he had the Hall Yanko Group in there, but he probably did. He was as true as his word. He was very excited and interested. And we kept on telephoning. At about 9 or 9.30, uh, I had um, discovered a way in which I could prove that this group existed there was a certain calculation and, you know, I could see that I could do this and if it existed, which was obvious to me that it did at the time, uh, I could prove it. And I said, but I'm absolutely exhausted, so I'm going to bed now. And then after putting the phone down, I thought a little bit, this repeated itself several times, I thought, oh, I'll just do something, you know. And so at 10-something, I telephoned him again, and I said, uh, you know, uh, I worked out a way of finding an element and so on. Anyway, I kept on like that. And finally, uh, I had about five calls, in each of which I said, uh, I've reduced it to a certain problem, but I'll tackle that tomorrow. But in every case, I sort of thought, oh, maybe I can just, you know, with this extra idea, maybe I can just do it and so on. Eventually, at 12.20, I telephoned him and said, I've done it. That was a Saturday, and we arranged to meet next Sunday morning, and it was cold and damp in the department and so on, and we just started working together. Um, and we didn't stop. Thompson, at that time, was spending six months in Chicago and six months in Cambridge, but he actually spent 18 months in Cambridge, I think it was, because he didn't want to stop working on this group. And it changed my life, utterly. Um, I remember meeting the master of my college in Cambridge, and he just knew that I'd made some breakthrough. He didn't, he was a historian. <laughs> he didn't know what it was. And, um, he, he uh, said, oh, I haven't seen you for some time. And I said, well, you know, I've been in Göttingen last Tuesday. These dates aren't exact, you know. And, I'm, uh, and then I was in Paris, you know, and at the weekend I fly to New York and so on. It turned me into a jet setter. Um, and um, it was fantastically exhilarating. And from being known to nobody, I suddenly became, you know, one of the mathematical names known to everybody, essentially. Um, whoo! <laughs> it's hard for me to think myself back. Uh, before then, I was in a sort of black period, I always think of it, or maybe blank period. Nothing seemed to work for me.